Okay, everyone, we are here with director Carter Smith. He has a film coming out called The Passenger. It arrives on digital and on demand August 4th. Carter, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, okay, so can you first tell us about the film? <clears throat> okay, so the easiest way that I describe it is it's a coming-of-age hostage road trip thriller um, for uh, people that are sort of like being left uncomfortable and being, you know, watching awkward situations unfold. So I feel good. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, strange, strangely, there is a feel good element that is like un completely unexpected and comes out of nowhere and is the last thing you would expect in this film, but there is actually a feel good element, I hope. <laughs> it's it, it sounds like there is a, a really interesting blend of elements and uh, I don't know, genres even. Yeah, like it was one of those, like when I read the script, it was like, okay, what, it, this isn't really a straight up horror movie. It's not really a straight up drama, like some horrific stuff happens, you know, but at the center, it's, it's kind of a, a great story about these two guys that get thrown into this awful situation and, and sort of what they, you know, what, how they come to terms and, and with what it is they're going through and how, how it kind of brings them together in a very messed up way. Can you tell us a little bit about the two characters that are, you know, the leads of the film? Yeah, so uh, Benson is played by Kyle Gallner and uh, Randy is played by Johnny Birchtold and they work at a fast food place where, um, you know, in this town where they both grew up where, you know, things have not changed for years and will never change and it's the kind of uh, job where, you know, they potentially might be there in 20 years, you know, it would, it's the kind of place where they maybe had plans to get out and leave and it just hasn't happened and, you know, there's something kind pretty awful and horrific that happens that sort of sends them on the run. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, Randy becomes, uh, Johnny Birchall's character becomes sort of a unwilling hostage slash, you know, pet project for the day uh, of, of Benson's. Awesome. If that makes sense. No, totally <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Uh, you mentioned that uh, when well, circling back on the script, um, this was written by Jack Stanley. Yeah. And how did you come in contact with the script and what made you like go, yes, 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 I want to do this? Yeah, well, I had read some of Jack's other uh, work before. Um, he did a really amazing uh, werewolf script called Silver that I fell in love with years ago. And when this opportunity came up, you know, these, these films that, that Blumhouse uh, does, you know, for for streaming, they sort of have this model of, you know, there's a there's a specific sort of format and certain number of characters and a certain kind of scope. And, you know, it was, it, I think that we were just, you know, they had sent me a script and I wasn't, I wasn't hundred percent in love with it. And I just made some phone calls and was like, uh, you know, sort of just to see if I could find something that might fit that model. And this was something that Jack had that he had like had in a drawer and he pulled it out and dusted it off. And he was like, well, this might work. Um, and it kind of fit the model perfectly. And I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily like exactly the, 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 you know, the mold of, of what Blumhouse normally does, but I think that's part of what was so exciting about it for everybody. Yeah. It sort of, uh, worked within the framework without being the typical Blumhouse film. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's obviously there's, there's, there's Blumhouse elements for sure. And they were involved every step of the way, of course, but like, you know, it's 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 a little less straight up genre than a lot of the other sort of entries into this this uh, slate of films that, that we worked on. Um, and how was working with Blumhouse? Uh, you mentioned that they had they had uh, specific things that uh, kind of fit that model. Did that yeah. did that uh, help or enhance the process? I I mean, you know, I had done, I did a film uh, with Blumhouse uh, called uh, Midnight Kiss for their uh, Into the Dark series. Mm -hmm. So like I had I had worked with a lot of the team before. So it was kind of great to come back and do this second one because it was, you know, it was like, we all kind of understood how to communicate really well. And like, I understood what they were looking for and they trusted me to to kind of bring home what they, what they needed. I actually think that some of the limitations um, 
kind of work in your favor, you know, if you, if you sort of embrace them, you know what I mean? The last thing you want to do is, is do some giant war movie that, that needs thousands of extra, you know, I mean, that's not, that's not the model, but for a, a movie like this, that's incredibly kind of intimate and, you know, psychological, it, it was, it was really exciting. So you leaned into, uh, you embraced those particular parameters. I don't want to call it constraint, but parameter. Uh, and you say that it enhanced the film. Yeah, I mean, you know, realistically, problem. you know, the, the the parameters. I mean, it was, you know, we, it, it, I was coming off of a off of a micro budget film where we had a crew of eight people. So, like to me, uh -huh. like to come straight into this, it was like we have a trailers and we have cater, like we have all this stuff that, like, you know, it was just kind of a great, you know, it didn't feel like parameters to me. It felt like a huge kind of like, you know, jump up. Uh, you know, after coming off of this micro budget project, yeah. but yeah, so it was, it was, um, you know, it's, it's always, it's always fun to work with what you've got and, and find creative ways to, you know, solve issues that come up as you're, you know, dealing with limitations. Excellent. Excellent. You, you're, um, I was looking at your bio and IMDb and you have a very interesting history in how you got into film. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that, where you started and how you ended up? Yeah, I came to film pretty late. I, I had a whole other career as a fashion photographer um, for, you know, years and years and years before I ever made a short film. You know, so I was I was kind of, um, you know, working on advertising and, and fashion and celebrity stuff for a long time before I ever started making films. And, and it was only um, when I read the short story that my first uh, short film was based on. I read this short story, Bug Crush, and I was like, that's my short film. That's that's what I've been waiting for. Cause I'd always wanted to make films and I I just hadn't um I hadn't done it because I sort of had this, you know, really busy schedule for like 15 years of you were doing you know, something. Of, yeah. yeah, I was doing something else. And 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 you know, and it it kind of, you know, spent a, a little while kind of tiptoeing back and forth between the two. Like I would, you know, make I went and made the ruins for DreamWorks and then, you know, went back to still photography for a couple of years and then kind of have done like a, a flip flop back and forth. And only in the last couple of years have I really kind of really focused on on directing and writing. You, how, how do you apply your visual talent in fashion photography to tell stories? And yeah. The narratives and dots? I think that, you know, with photography, you have like one you know, fraction of a second to tell the story you want to tell. You've got one frame. And and that means that within that that frame, everything has to be sort of adding to the story from, you know, the color of the shirt to the what the eye makeup looks like to, you know, the way the chair is positioned to the light to the, I mean, all of this, all of that stuff, you sort of, I mean, I found ways to make that contribute to telling the story. And I think that, you know, moving to film, it sort of, enabled me to like have this backhand of like really zeroing in on every single thing that's in the frame, um, mm -hmm. which I think is, you know, just kind of comes, comes naturally after, after shooting stills for so long. And it, 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 you know, the importance of, you know, whether a character has their hair tucked behind their ear or not tucked behind their ear, like, you know, I mean, it, it is stuff that a lot of people might not notice, but it's the kind of thing that I'm sort of used to um, fixating on <laughs> as a photographer. Yeah, it it I love to talk about that stuff because um, so many of those details go unnoticed. Yeah, they are sadly. <laughs> well, yes and no. I mean, like, yeah, if they were if they were overt. They would yeah, be awesome. but it, it but they are there to enhance the story. Yeah. So, in, in imperceptible ways often you know like it's more more of a feeling than than any kind of like you know obvious information often you mm -hmm. know if you if you do if you do it well hopefully yeah most definitely so i guess my next question is why horror you know good question um it's the same question my parents have like I, you know i don't know like i've always loved you know scary stories scary books scary movies um i think it's one of the one of the genres that i, I just kind of like making people feel things and 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 sort of extreme things and 
you know, horror and comedy are, are two of the, you know, two of the genres where you really, you know, get like a, a clear cut response from an audience, you know, to see people sink and squirm in their seat and look away and scream and cover their face. Like that is incredibly gratifying as a, as a storyteller. Um, and I think that also like within, within horror, there are so many different sort of genres and, and types of stories and types of characters. Like you can tell a story about any type of character and, and, um, and horror audiences will show up and take a chance and you don't need to have big movie stars and like you, the, the, the genre community is so incredibly like quick to embrace mm-hmm. stories that they love. Um, in a way that, that I find really exciting. And also you know? super supportive. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and, I, and I'm a, and I'm a, I'm a fa- you know, I've, I'm a fan. I've been going to, you know, horror conventions and horror film festivals, like, you know, as a fan for as long as I've, I've, you know, been working and making anything uh, in the genre. I love it. I just love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do you have any particular influences as far as the horror goes or? Um, I mean, you know, that, I mean, across the, nothing specific. I mean, I think that, you know, probably early on, I saw a lot, a little bit too much David Cronenberg, um, nice. you know, at, when I was a little too young, like I saw the brood, um, doesn't, you know, necessarily have much to do with, you know, this film in particular, but like, you know, it, it, it was one of those films where, you know, the, everything about it just felt stylish and beautiful and like same with like eyes of laura mars which i just rewatched recently it's like there's it's such a, a world and it's so kind of there's the attention to all of it is is so precise um in a way that you don't necessarily get in um i don't want to throw any films under the bus but like but like in, in you know in some in some in some genre uh stuff yeah i i totally get it um but you can definitely tell where there's a fan of horror behind the camera. Yes, yeah. hopefully, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, um, I guess, I guess that's really. Is there anything else that you want to share about the film that makes this something that people cannot miss? I mean, I think I think that, like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm excited for for genre fans to check this out. I, you know, even though it's it's more of a thriller and more of a sort of you know, dramatic uh, story than than maybe you know genre fans are used to. I think that there's. I was really excited to to kind of play with the genre elements and really play them up. You know, as a genre fan myself, to make sure that like I was kind of getting the, the you know the level of of uh, fear and and um, you know kind of unease that I like in my in my films, but you know. Hopefully they'll be sucked in and 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 sort of fall for the, you know, the weird messed up partnership at the at the core of the movie. Wonderful. Um, well, Carter, it was a an absolute pleasure to talk to you, sir. And thanks so much, Norm. Absolutely. And everybody, again, the passenger on digital on demand August fourth. Uh, check it out. And Carter, best of luck on this release. Uh, thank you. All right. Take care.